Previously, we uncovered intriguing connections between CERN, the Large Hadron Collider, and some unsettling symbolism. Their logo alone draws eyebrows. It's said to subtly display 666, a biblical reference to Satan. Let's not forget CERN's creation of the World Wide Web, abbreviated WWW, which translates to 666 in Hebrew gematria. Coincidence? Maybe, but it doesn't stop there. Their most powerful magnet was initially called Satan before being renamed Cast. Why even start with that name in the first place? Even more curious is CERN's involvement in the movie Angels and Demons, showing a glowing angel, often associated with Lucifer, on their website. Now add their collaboration with NASA during the April 2024 eclipse, which coincided with the restarting of the Hadron Collider after two years. Some might think it's a simple experiment, but the timing seems awfully deliberate. CERN's location in St. Guinness Pauli bears a striking resemblance to the name Apollyon, the destroyer deity. Combined with the presence of a Shiva statue, the symbolism seems to be more than random. Even without the satanic angle, something is off. Let's deconstruct CERN from a purely scientific angle. Anyway, this is part two of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. I was interested in physics during my teenage years. I read Werner Heisenberg, Niels Bohr, and Richard Feynman. I even read some of the mind-crushingly boring books of Stephen Hawking, believe it or not. I have some idea of what physicists sound like, and the CERN people do not sound, look, or feel like physicists. CERN's biggest accomplishment is the discovery of the God particle, the Higgs boson. But nobody seems to know what this is or how it might be of practical use. According to the CERN website, the current director for accelerators and technology, the highest scientific position at CERN is a guy named Mike Lamont. I found one printed interview with him online. Do you know how you can tell a liar? They speak in generalities. Here's the interview, interspersed with my commentary. What fascinates you concerning your work and the LHC? The Large Hadron Collider is a fascinating machine and immensely complicated. The fact that it works at all is because we managed to canton the expertise. So we have a cryogenics team, a vacuum team, a power converter team, a radio frequency team, a beam instrumentation team. The machine has to work excellently in order to push the boundaries and to produce as many collisions as possible. The goal is to give the experiments a big size of data outputs so that they can start answering questions like, is there any new physics at this new energy? The collider is fascinating and complicated. It works excellently to push boundaries, a big size of data outputs. Is there any new physics at this new energy? I've worked with tens of thousands of people throughout my career. When a person starts talking in vague generalities, I know they have absolutely no clue of the subject matter. What do you do to stay motivated? We are problem solving and curiosity driven almost on a daily basis. It is absorbing itself. You don't have to motivate yourself because every day is different. I work with incredible people. We are allowed to express ourselves. You can bring humanity and humor to the effort while keeping the ship in the right direction. And it is still a remarkable thing what we are doing. It is a huge privilege to be part of it. We are problem solving and curiosity driven. Oh yeah, what problems have you solved? The people are incredible. Yeah, what's so incredible about them? We are allowed to express ourselves. Really? Wow, what an achievement. You can bring humanity and humor to the effort while keeping the ship in the right direction. Oh yeah, what direction would that be? We are doing something remarkable. Oh, what's that? It's a huge privilege. Is that right? The entire interview comprises nothing but corporate slogans without specifics. Or what have you learned so far from the world's foremost scientist? Which effect can your work have in society? We bring together people from all over the world and try to solve common problems. We support other enterprises. For example, recently in the design 
installation and building of a medical facility for cancer treatment. On the one hand, people come here and are being educated, but also we go out and use our expertise around the world in collaborations with other teams. In this sense, I think it is a 21st century template of cooperation and pretty unique. Cancer treatment. Wow. What kind? How does it differ from other cancer treatments? How many have been cured? Oh wait, I see you're not actually involved in cancer treatment. You only installed the building. I didn't know CERN does construction work. Before making this video, I watched several videos by these CERN folks, just to make sure I'm dealing with goofballs rather than scientists. I wouldn't want to irresponsibly publish and video maligning a good organization. All the videos I watched are along similar lines of vagueness. A real waste of time. Maybe that's why their videos on YouTube have such a low view count despite supposedly being revered by billions of people. In fact, less people watch CERN videos than watch mine. How is that even possible? CERN has been advertised across all media platforms for decades and has received budgets in the trillions, and yet I with an ad budget of zero have more video views than them. You see, there is something shady about having a near unlimited budget and worldwide multi-decade media attention and still not getting the public to be interested in your science. Sure, I realize science isn't a popularity contest, but CERN has invested a lot of money into their media presence spanning several decades. Why do they only average half a dozen likes per video? Before making this video, I was going to buy this book. Then I realized I'm so bored by CERN. I don't want to read a whole book, even if it debunks them. I fully understand the book just from reading the title. Am I being unfair? Prejudging? Ignorant? Maybe. I'm open to the idea that I'm simply an uneducated moron who doesn't understand these geniuses. This is one of many videos I have watched, trying to figure out just what all this is about. It's the boss of CERN Fabiola Giannotti, herself a most distinguished particle physicist, speaking in front of the WEF. I'm not recommending the video, it's tedious. What makes it tedious? There is nothing in the video that we haven't all already been told in grade school. She explains that CERN is the biggest laboratory in the world for particle physics. Particle physics is the study of the behavior of very, very small things. Okay, what's new? She says the Large Hadron Collider beams two protons in opposite directions to make them collide. Basically, they're taking very small things and shooting them against each other. Imagine shooting two soccer balls at each other and hoping to learn the secrets of the universe that way. Then she goes into what subatomic particles are, then something about the Big Bang. Then she again says that the purpose of the LHC is to see what happens when two particles collide. Okay, and how many more times do you need to see what happens when two items collide at high speed? She says the collision produces thousands of particles and we measure every single particle to give us a picture of the collision event. Uh, okay, I thought I was going to hear more about all the discoveries, but then she talks about all the nations that fund to this shoot fest. She then mentions that the World Wide Web was invented by CERN, certainly nothing new to that audience. This is a WEF audience she is speaking to. Those are supposed to be the 1% upper elite of the world. But the presentation is hilariously basic. You'd expect the audience to be school children. At the 14 minute mark, she finally speaks on the Higgs boson. She says it's a very important particle without which atoms would not exist as stable systems. Most matter is made of dark energy that we don't know. She concludes with, Darkness is the focus of our scientific exploration today and tomorrow. LOL. Okay. The presentation contained no insight that hasn't already been published ad nauseum across hundreds of documentaries, basic school textbooks, or even 8 o'clock news shows. Fabiola Giannotti is the boss of CERN, the world's number one expert on particle physics. A real expert in their field can a tell an audience something unknown, b show something known from a new angle, c go beyond bare grade school basics. After the presentation, the moderator says, that was terrific. Then the moderator says, what strikes me as a reflection is the fundamental unity of us all. And pointing at the screen filled with stars, the image here is from the James Webb Telescope. It doesn't get any more triter than this. I turned the video off at this point. 
I used to coach people in public speaking. If I were here coach, I'd say, offer something fascinating, a nugget of gold, not yet known publicly. Add something funny that happened during your research. Offer something practical you've learned from your research. Here's my problem with this whole world-changing pig's boson discovery. Before its discovery, we said that everything is made up of very small particles such as atoms. Then we said everything is made up of even smaller particles, protons and neutrons. And then we said everything is made up of even smaller particles called quarks. Now it's an even smaller one called Higgs boson. So what? This is kicking the can down the road. I was frustrated with the emptiness of the CERN videos that I went looking for any CERN skeptic. I found not all physicists are enamored with CERN. But CERN invented the internet, I've been told. But they didn't. The internet was developed by DARPA. It's been used by the military since the 1960s. I am not and never have been interested in what the future holds with CERN. I'm interested in applicable knowledge, not theoretical mumbo jumbo. CERN's experiments have never been independently reproduced. Applicable knowledge can be used to improve lives. Whose life has been improved by the hundreds of billions of dollars spent on smashing particles against each other. In many ways, these people remind me of NASA, who will keep spending trillions of dollars on going to Mars or going to the moon, only to discover pictures of rocks in every decade that passes. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.